Hello and welcome back to Practical Alchemy, the podcast. We're still on our Wellness 101 mini series. My name is Natalie and I am your host and I'm so grateful that you're here, whether you've been listening for a long time or somebody sent this to you or this is just the random episode you decided to pick up on. There is a reason that you're here, so thank you for spending part of your day in the frequencies of sound together. So we're going to start today's episode by just taking a breath. It's personally something that I want to start incorporating so that I can also be just a little bit more grounded, a little bit more centered for these episodes. Today, we're going to talk about a modality that I fell in love with at the height of the pandemic, so much so that I decided to do a certification in it, and we're going to talk about emotional freedom technique, otherwise known as EFT for short, or tapping. And this is really such a powerful modality because you can really workshop any big emotion, any trauma that comes up in real time by yourself and of course if it's something that you need to get additional support from a therapist or a practitioner that is always needed as well but sometimes you just need something to snap you out of the loop out of the cycle and so EFT has been really powerful for me when I have limiting stories limiting beliefs limiting thoughts negative thoughts come up and I need to bring myself back and course correct in the moment, bring myself back into alignment, into the right mind frame. EFT is such a beautiful technique that I'm going to show you the tapping points today, but of course you can also book a session with me. You can even YouTube people doing guided sessions for specific needs, but EFT, emotional freedom technique is also known as tapping. It originated in the 1990s, primarily through the work of Gary Craig, who was an engineer and personal performance coach, and he was really influenced by Roger Callahan's thought field therapy, TFT, which also involved tapping on specific meridian points to address emotional distress. TFT is more complex process where EFT is more simplified, more accessible, which is why I say it's such a cool tool to know and to have anytime you're going through a big emotional distress and you just need something to bring you back, right? And to really bring you back, not something that's going to help you suppress, not something that's going to help you push down what you're feeling, but something that's going to allow what you're feeling to be processed and worked through in real time. So EFT for short or tapping, you'll hear me kind of call it both things interchangeably. It draws upon the principles from various fields, including acupuncture in which we look at the meridian channels, which is where we're tapping the meridian points. We look at psychology, we look at neuro-linguistic programming, NLP, which is another school of thought that's super interesting to me. And the tapping process targets specific acupressure points while focusing on the emotional issue, the emotional charge or physical discomfort with the aim to restore balance in the body's energy system and reducing negative emotions. So we're using the tapping of the meridian points to rebalance the energetic system. And then we're using the actual phrasing through neuro-linguistic programming and psychology to begin to reduce the negative emotions happening in the mind. EFT is super popular. It gained so much popularity with practitioners integrating it into different therapeutic modalities and self-help practices, which is why EFT is such a beautiful tool to know because it's really complementary and it can stand on its own. And there's been so much research that has been done since EFT came to be. But, you know, although it might seem like a new age concept to some, its roots really go back decades. And especially with it being so rooted in traditional Chinese medicine and Chinese acupuncture, we really can look at it as a practical tool that can be used at any point. Like for me, sometimes my morning routine is like my morning pages are a must. I journal in the morning and if I don't journal, then it's hard for me to move through my day. But sometimes when I journal, 
things will come up, right? Especially if you journal right when you wake up, when you're kind of in the field of the subconscious, everything is super fresh. And so sometimes I'll journal and I'll notice that some uncomfortable things will come up and that's when I'll look at EFT to process before moving on with my day. So we talked about earlier that EFT involves tapping on specific meridian points in the body while also verbalizing affirmations or even just acknowledging the emotional distress. And this process is believed to release the blocked energy. And like I said, restore the body's natural balance. I was reading this research, I forget her name, but she was basically saying that EFT acts as a powerful tool to address unresolved emotional issues, traumas. And again, when we consider trauma, we have little t trauma, big t trauma. There are different variables, different degrees of the kind of support that we might need, but it's really a powerful tool to address all of these things, phobias, even physical pain. And by tapping on the meridian points, we disrupt the patterns of the negative emotions and create a shift towards healing and emotional freedom. And though there still is so much research to be done, the current research that stands suggests that tapping on acupressure points can actually lower cortisol levels, reduce anxiety, alleviate symptoms of PTSD and depression. And it's really beautiful because it's truly such a simple practice. And from a neuroscience perspective, EFT regulates the amygdala, our brain's fear center, and modulates the body's stress response. And by tapping on the meridian points, we're stimulating the body's endorphin system as well, promoting relaxation, promoting emotional regulation. So that's why in real time, if you're in a place of fight or flight, the amygdala is being activated, you can bring yourself back, even if you don't have the words or the verbiage to go with it, just tap the points, you'll notice you feel so much better. And so, you know, when we look at EFT, whether you're brand new to tapping, you're a seasoned practitioner, there are various ways to leverage this technique and there are different approaches that people take with it. And so for me, I like to start with a specific issue or emotion to target. So for example, my negative self-talk, usually I'm going to be super vulnerable with you guys, but that's why you tune in because that practical alchemy, we don't hold back. <laughs> Actually, we do hold back. We try to keep it pretty like wholesome and PG, but I digress. My usual negative self-talk really involves around enoughness. Am I enough compared to my peers? Comparison, right? In the world of social media, it's so hard to stay in your lane when everything around us is telling us that we're not doing enough, right? And so for me, I would start with the specific issue of I feel like I'm not doing enough or if I'm being truly candid, I feel like I'm not enough. And I would begin that with a tapping session. And I would use clear affirming language while tapping to reinforce positive beliefs. So it might look something like this. I would start by tapping the karate chop point and say, even though I feel that I am not enough sometimes, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I would continue tapping. I would repeat this three times and then I would move to the crown of the head and I would say this feeling of not enough. I would move to the point above the eyebrow. This feeling of not enough, it holds me back. It holds me back from my power. The side of the eye, it holds me back from fully being myself authentically under the eye. And it causes me so much pain. It hurts. It sucks. Moving above the lip. I don't want to feel like I'm not enough. Moving at the chin. And in my heart, my truth is I know that I am more than enough. Tapping my collarbones. I know that I am so worthy. I know that I'm more than enough. And then the last point would be under the armpit. And that is my truth. I am more than enough. And so that was a condensed version. Maybe I'll do some videos on YouTube doing some sequences. But the truth is, you can take this and make it your own. Whatever is showing up for you, even if you just move through the points, state what's present and say, even though X, Y, and Z is present, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. 
Then move to the crown of the head and just verbalize it, what's present. Above the eyebrow, how does it make you feel? Side of the eye, how does it hold you back? Under the eye, what is it causing? Pain, fear, anxiety. Over the lip, maybe you don't want to feel this way anymore. At the chin, have some compassion for yourself. You're human. Collarbones, you will be okay. Under the armpit, you are okay. And so that's a really simple condensed sequence. I mean, typically in sessions, we do this over and over. I also have a journaling component so that I can get pen to paper, all my thoughts out, my limiting beliefs, my stories, but experiment. Find what works best for you. Find what language works best for you. And consistency is key. Maybe you tap daily. Maybe when you're in traffic at rush hour, you feel super stressed. You just tap the points, right? Begin to familiarize yourself. Begin to familiarize your body, your physiology with this modality. And if anything, I hope that you feel inspired to explore the world of EFT. Feel free to send me a message if you want to explore it together. I love working with people with this modality because it's a tool that once you do it with a practitioner, you know the sequence, you can always kind of daily come back to yourself do the daily work, and then work with a practitioner for the deeper work for that next level. You know, this really has the potential for emotional liberation and healing. And true freedom starts within. True liberation starts within. And with tools like tapping, we can embark on a journey towards greater self-awareness, towards resilience, and towards inner peace. So I hope this episode is helpful. Share it with somebody who you think could benefit from it. Leave a rating, leave a review, let us know your thoughts, and we'll see you next time.